Hi, this is Nick from EC3000 Survivors, and I just wanted to show you a bit about my latest little project. Um, you remember a few months back we made the uh, cool multi cart for the uh, Sega? So, uh, what I want to try and do now is see if I can actually make some cartridge cases for it, because these obviously haven't been made in about 25 years. And um, if possible, I'd rather not go and throw out a whole lot of um, old games just to get some cases. Here we'll look at the case. Um, basically, two part case, they just lock together around the circuit board. Um, these things were originally made with injection moulding. Um, I looked at getting these done with 3D printing, but that's just um, too expensive, unfortunately. So Nixon tries to make a silicon mould of the two halves of the case, and then see if we can take a resin cast. So uh, let's just have a look at... Um, it's not, not too hard, it takes a little bit of practice. went into Topmark Products in Ellerslie um, a week or so ago. They are very, very helpful. So they gave me some um, pretty cool products. The um, silicon I'm going to be using is uh, Pinky Seal. It's a platinum silicon. Um, it's uh, pretty good for this. It um, flows well, sets fast, um, holds detail well. It's pretty resilient, um, and uh, that's uh, that's quite important because I've got these real thin little edges down here. So um, that's a has to go and pick all that up when, without getting um, too much air in the mixture. So similar for the Easy Cast. Um, this is. I don't know if this is going to be the right um, stuff to use or not in the end, but um, the stuff's uh, pretty thin, so it'll actually pour into that reasonably well without um, uh, getting too many air bubbles in there. So I won't need, hopefully won't need a vacuum system to make these things. Uh, what else we got? Some of the other things we got here. Uh, some classic clay, very handy. This is uh, modelling clay. It's um, oil-based modelling clay. Um, doesn't dry out, so that's that's good. Um, silicon doesn't stick to it, and that's very handy for mounting the things that you're going to go and take a cast of. What else we got here? Um, oh yeah, got a little test pack of um, pots and bits and pieces, rubber gloves, things like that that I might might come in handy. Um, got a uh, <laughs> scalpel. Uh, that's that's actually pretty handy for trimming the silicon. Um, the silicon cuts well, but you do want a real sharp knife, so scalpel's good for that. Uh, what else we got down there? We've got uh, oh yeah, a bit of Vaseline. You need that just to make sure the two halves of the mold don't stick to each other when you're making it. Okay. So that's um, yeah, that's that's most of the tools we got. So what I did first is I made a test. Uh, I made a little uh, test uh, cast. Hang on, let me just turn off that kettle for a sec. First thing I did was make a test cast with something that would go and simulate these thin edges because um, well, I wanted to try on a smaller scale to see how this would work. So this is just a little soldering tin um, that came with my soldering iron. So what I did is there you go. You can see the first test mold I made of that. You get the idea, this is what you call a plug mould or a squash mould. So basically what I did is I embedded, I stuck this upside down in some clay, made a little box around it, and went and poured all the um, pinky sill over the top. So when I went and, so so it was kind of like this, so when I pulled that off and it's set, I go, turn this upside down like that. Ooh, that's, that's sitting in there at the time. That's the first half of the mould, you can cover that in Vaseline, stick the box up again, pour over the second half of the mould, then you split them apart and you get two halves like that. So what you do to work one of these is you go and fill up the bottom half of that, about, um, about a third full, you go and kind of sprinkle a bit of resin all over the top, and what you do is you plonk them together, Oop, line them up like that, a uh, whole pile of resin comes shooting out these air vents up the top and squishing out the side, leave it for about uh, 30 minutes, pull it open, and then if you then you get something like this. This is the um, first test mould I made, I was pretty happy with that. As you can see, I've got some. Um, don't worry about the flashing. It's um, I didn't trim that off. The bits here, you can see where it hasn't filled completely up towards the top of the mould. Uh, I had <laughs> had several goes at that. Took me half a dozen tries to get it right. You see, I can start to get worse. Is the uh, there's one of the next ones I made with a great big. Um, you know, didn't put enough um, stuff in that one. There you go. I got even worse on that one. <laughs> you can see that one's just awful. Then I finally started to get the hang of it. That one's pretty good, got an air bubble in the middle unfortunately. Aside from that, that one's actually got really nice detail and is reasonably strong. And finally, here we go, the pigmented one. I've got a nice deep black on that. If you have a look at that, that's actually got some really nice edges on it. Um, you can see a couple of minor little air holes there. But that's not too bad, that's, that, that one was a pretty good proof of concept. So, I was, I was pretty pleased with that and it was well worthwhile doing my practice on that first. Because uh, this stuff is reasonably expensive. It's around about $100 US a kilo, more or less, um, here in New Zealand. And so, that's about a tenth, that's, oh, I don't know, that's 
something like that, 15, 10, 15 bucks New Zealand worth of silicon there. So I, I didn't want to waste it because the um, the, the moulds for these are going to be significantly bigger. So I guess the final part is to show you what I'm going to do next. This is what I made up last night. And this will give you an idea of how, how it works as well. Here we go. There's the top half of uh, one of the cartridge cases. And if you can see in here, it might be a little bit hard in this light, but you can see I've got this box all made up around it. So this is going to allow me to go and pour silicon in. Um, this box is sealed at the edges. It's sealed with the uh, classic clay modelling clay all around the bottom there. And on the inside edges, and it's taped together. So it's going to, the silicon pours pretty well, so we don't want to go splurging out the sides here. So you can imagine when I go and pour this in here, it's going to go and cover up that first half. I'm going to cover it by about a centimetre. I'm going to let that set, and let it set. Hopefully this is all going to pull off nicely. I'll turn it over and it'll be ready to make the second half of the mould. Um, you can also see for this plug mould, I've been very careful to, I completely sealed up the space in there. So um, I'm going to get kind of the, if you can imagine, I'm kind of going to get the equivalent of that. I'm just going to get kind of like the, the inverted kind of hole that I can kind of pour resin into. And then the other side, when I turn it over, is going to have the, the detail or the, the plug side. So the other side's... The other side when I turned it over is going to be picking up all this kind of detail here and that's going to, going to get smooshed, smooshed in and squish all the resin out and that'll hopefully give me a nice cool shape. So uh, yeah, that's the, that's the latest project. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty fiddly way of making these things but um, I think I'll be able to get a few quite nice quality cases out of it. Um, it's, it, is, it is a bit fiddly but it's not hard but it takes a bit of practice and it's certainly not cost effective for large scale production but I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it and I just want to see um, how good a result I can get just uh, for my own use. Thanks for watching.